So, uh, Ali, just to, you know, to give people a, a bigger picture here, I, I mean, you know, I have a, a close uh, family friend and relative who uh, I would consider slightly to the right of me on, on these matters um, in terms of how he views the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. But he said to me, whatever you call the situation in terms of the occupation of the West Bank, the Israeli occupation of the West Bank, if you don't like the term apartheid, go to Hebron, because if that's not apartheid, then what is? What, what, what can sort of an American who, who doesn't really know what life is like in the West Bank, how would you explain to them the, the, the hardship? And obviously, as you, as you uh, um, are sort of attesting to right now, that there are very, there are very varied degrees. You know, Ramallah is different than, let's say, Hebron. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's a lot. The, the, the West Bank is a small place, but there's a lot of different stuff going on here. Ramallah is a total bubble. There's a few bars that serve alcohol, and, and there's a big scene of internationals, NGO workers, and a bunch of activists hang out here. And it's the seat of government, and there's, you know, there, there's, uh, there's Palestinian police who kind of stand around at the entrance to town and don't seem to do much else, uh, except for occasionally break up Palestinian protests. And, um, and it's known as the bubble. And then you've got, you know, uh, Hebron, which, as your friend said, is uh, an extreme example. It's sort of the, the, the ground zero for, for, you know, what can only, you know, I said in my piece, segregation is too light a word. Uh, uh, but it, 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 they're, they're incredibly different situations, you know. Um, the, really, the, it's amazing to drive around the area and to see, see the landscape, you know. It's not even within from, from city to city, but just seeing the hills cut up by these, these settler roads. You know, I was driving around with my, uh, my host here, the journalist Joseph Dana, and, uh, and you can just see that you're driving through the Palestinian roads or these sort of potholed roads where if there ever were guardrails, they've once been removed and just have sort of these support posts that are left behind. There's no lights. It's dangerous to drive around at night, especially the way Palestinians drive. And um, and it's just and then you're you're you know you're, you drive around to bend on a hill, and you see this settler highway that's made to take settlers directly from their 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 little towns deep into the West Bank, directly back into past the Green Line into Israel proper. And these highways are well lit, they're paved, they have lines, there's guardrails everywhere. They're well signed, though uh, the signs are in, are in Hebrew, Arabic, and English, though oftentimes um, settler youths will go and spray paint out the Arabic uh, writing. And it's just, you know, it's just an incredibly, it, it's two totally different infrastructures. It's almost like like two places that are overlaid each other. And it, it, it's it's painfully obvious that, that there's one group of people who, by dint of their citizenship in the state of Israel, mostly stemming from their um, their you know their ethno religious background, that they get the full rights of being an Israeli citizen, and then there's some you know two and a half million other people who are denied those rights, can't travel freely, get stopped at checkpoints. You know, one of the sort of I, I arrived at the West Bank through the through the uh, Kalandia checkpoint near Ramallah, between Jerusalem and Ramallah. And then uh, driving around in the days I've been here, I've passed several times back and forth into Israel, and it's been mostly uh, through other checkpoints that are, for the most part, for settlers. And it's amazing that those checkpoints, if you just happen to not look Arab, you don't get stopped. I mean, we would roll up close enough where they could just see us, and then it wasn't you didn't have to roll down the window and say hello, just raise the gate and let you go. And uh, and Kalandia was just a totally different story, uh, you know. Seeing seeing Palestinians and Arabs and Palestinian Arabs lined up to get into into Jerusalem for whatever reason, or just not even into Jerusalem, but really into the parts of the West Bank that are on the other side of the wall. Um, it's, there's just huge lines, and it's pretty incredible to see the differences. It's really really stark here. 